Masking is about hiding and revealing certain parts of an image or graphic. It is a key concept in graphic design, and it is very useful to learn how to properly use it in Adobe Illustrator. In this video, I will explain and compare the following three masking techniques clipping mask, opacity mask, and the draw inside mode. This tutorial is part of a comprehensive online course called Adobe Illustrator Masterclass. You can check it out and try the free trial if you want to learn everything there is to know about this amazing industry standard application. Masking is an incredibly useful technique in Illustrator. It is helping you to show and hide certain parts of objects. In this video, I'm going to show you the three different methods that you can use to do masking. And then in the next videos, I'm going to go deeper into explaining and showing examples or real life examples of how you can apply this technique in your daily work. Now let's start with draw inside. This is an interesting method, which we already discussed when we were talking about drawing in general. This is actually just a drawing mode. And all you need to do is to have a shape and then switch to this draw inside mode. So once I select that option, I start to see this outline, the dashed lines around the corner points. That means now whatever I'm going to create, no matter what tool I use, is going to be confined within this shape. And although it's not called masking, but essentially that's what masking is about. So let's try maybe the blob brush tool. I am going to deselect the shape itself, so I'm not changing the color of that. But then I'm going to change the color of my brush maybe to yellow. So now if I start drawing, maybe a little bit bigger brush size. So I'm using the square brackets to increase that. So if I start drawing, first it will look like my line is going across and beyond the shape. But once I let go, you will see that because of the draw inside mode is activated, it's going to stop at the edges. So it cannot go beyond the shape itself. So let me draw another line once again, maybe a wavy line this time. And when I let go, once again, it only shows within the shape. Now, if I switch back to normal drawing mode, of course, I can draw wherever I want and it won't be affected by that shape. It was only happening because of the draw inside mode. So what happens actually when we use the draw inside mode, let's have a closer look at this object within the layers panel. Once you find the object, you can actually see it, it's called clip group. If I open it up, we will see the ellipse inside and the two parts. When I select the parts individually, you can actually see them going beyond the shape so although we can't see it, it is still there, that starting and end point as I was drawing them. So even without us knowing, we are actually creating a clipping mask when we use the draw inside mode. And the shape, the original shape that we had, that circle, is turned into the mask itself. But at the same time, maintaining its original color, which was red. Now, how can I tell that this is a clipping mask? Because it has an underline. That's the indication of a clipping mask in Illustrator. It's good to remember that. So using draw inside is a convenient way of creating a clipping mask, but let's see another more traditional way of doing it. So let's say I would like to have this black line kept within the red circle behind it. So what I need to do is to make sure that the shape which I'm going to use as the mask is always on top. Having the shape selected, which is the circle in this case, I'm going to go to Arrange, Bring to Front. Now I can select the, both of these objects, so both the circle and the square, and then I can go to the Object menu and choose Clipping Mask Make. Now you might remember this technique, we've also used this for type with the elephants when we wanted to keep that image within a text. And I also mentioned the shortcut back then, it's Command or Control 7. So once you click on this, this is what's going to happen. So that black line is now only showing within the circle, but the circle itself disappeared. 
or it is actually there but we just can't see it because it doesn't have any fill or stroke. So that's what happens when you use a shape as a clipping mask. It becomes completely transparent but we can make it visible again. All we have to do is to go to the layers panel, open up the clip group, find our clipping mask, remember the underline, select it. Also remember don't select something like that, click on the little circle on the side. So once the object is selected, the clipping mask object, we can assign a color to its fill like we had it before, we can use red. And there is another interesting thing that's happening here also. Although we have the circle above the rectangle in the layer structure, we still see the rectangle being in front. That's because whenever you have an object as a clipping mask, it's always going to be seen as the background of that clipping group. So let me just explain that and prove that to you. If I draw another circle, let's just say something like that. And I'm going to use a different color so we can easily distinguish it. Let's use the yellow that worked on the previous example as well. So if I move this circle and maybe somewhere around here, it's obviously not interacting with the clipping mask at the moment. But see what happens once I drag it into our clipping group. So there's the ellipse and I'm going to keep dragging it and I intentionally going to drag it above the ellipse for now. I let go and you can see that's the way it looks. Now if I keep dragging it further in it's going to be above the black line and of course it is still only visible within our clipping mask is as soon as you place an object into an already existing clipping group it's going to start behave like the other objects in that group and stay visible only inside that boundary. So let's have a look at the order of these objects. If I move this yellow circle underneath the red circle which is the clipping mask it's not going to show any difference because the red circle, although virtually is on top, it is considered a background element. So that doesn't make any difference. But if I want this yellow circle to be behind the black line, of course I can do that by changing the order. Now what if you want to remove an object from a clipping mask? Let's say I decided I would like to have this yellow circle outside of the mask. Well, of course, it's very easy. All you have to do is to drag the object out from the clipping group like that. And now it has nothing to do with it. So once again, placing it inside will be clipping it or dragging it out of the group is going to mean that it leaves the clipping and it will be free to be visible wherever it's moved to. Now, last but not least, I would like to talk about opacity mask which is again another way of showing and hiding certain objects in Illustrator. And usually with opacity masks, you would also start with an object which you would like to show and hide partially and another object which you will use as the mask itself. Now notice that I have a gradient applied here and it's starting from black, then goes into white, then goes into black again. If you are familiar with masking in Photoshop, then this technique will make more sense to you because in Photoshop, layer masks would use black to hide and white to show. And this is exactly what an opacity mask is doing in Illustrator. The main advantage of an opacity mask over a clipping mask is that it can not only show or hide, but it can create transitions as well. So if I want this black line not to be so abrupt showing only within the circle, but almost like fading in and then fading out again, then this is the best technique to use. Once again, what I will do is to drag this rectangle on top. Remember, either clipping mask or opacity mask, the masking object should be always on top. And also don't forget, you need to select both of the shapes together. Now we can create the opacity mask. My favorite place to do this would be from the transparency panel. If you can't find this, just go to the window menu and there you will find transparency. So once you have the two objects selected, you can then here click on make mask. And once we do that, 
it's going to join these two shapes together, creating two sides, one which is the object and the other one which is the mask. And notice my layers panel changes when I selected the mask attribute, which will only show that rectangle with the gradient on it. That means, for example, if I use the gradient tool, I can adjust how I want this gradient to behave. And if I want to go back and maybe adjust the width of my shape, I can switch modes and go back to editing the actual shape itself, where I can use all the different techniques that we've learned before to make changes and maybe even change the color, what we used before, yellow. So once I use a different color like now, you can see using an opacity mask can create a much more subtle transition compared to a clipping mask. But both of them are extremely useful. And of course, you can even combine these two techniques in your illustration work. So now that we know the difference between these methods and what is masking about, in the next few videos, I'm going to give you a couple of real life examples to help you to make the most of these techniques.